what did you, what were, I want to, now that we've kind of covered the whole story, I want to go into what makes awesome culture? Like what gives you the passion to show up every day and say, we're going to do 400 cars. We're going to do 500 cars. We're going to do a thousand cars. Cause most people would say that's impossible. I I'm a visionary as well. So I get it. We sure. set, we just put a number and we're like, we're doing it. We're figuring it out. I'm not paying attention to the obstacles, but how did you do it in real world terms? Because I know so many people are like, it's just not possible. And you're like, what are you talking about? Yeah, no doubt, man. So really what I, what I effectively learned over time, you know, belief systems matter. Law of attraction is real. There's a reason that the Bible says when two or more come together in my name, so it will be. What we focused on doing was creating a belief system of not just two, but 10 and then 20 and then 30 and then 40. And ultimately we had 300 employees at the end that all believed the same thing and that belief system attracts the universe has no choice but to bend at your will and at your mercy now don't get me wrong you don't just sit back it takes ridiculous amounts of energy and work ridiculous amounts and constantly continuing to feed the belief but in order for people to believe in us we had to believe in them and that was the biggest switch for us most companies most businesses most entrepreneurs most people what they what they see is they see the dollar and they say hey i want to make a dollar how can i make a dollar so then they go out and they make a dollar and then they go oh my gosh i made a dollar how can i make another dollar and once they figure out they can make a few more dollars they go okay if i just had more customers i could make more dollars so then they start spending a lot of time, effort, and energy trying to generate customers. Now, once we have a bunch of customers, now we, when we've got a bunch of dollars that are coming from the customers, the natural progression for any entrepreneur is, well, now I need some people. Because if I can get some people, those people can service the customers, which the customers will generate the dollars. So it's really this pyramid, right? This, this money is the first objective Customers become objective number two and our people become objective number three. That's pretty much how most businesses are derived. What I went in with and the owner shared this vision with me is what if we do it the other way? What if we focus on people and we get good people and we pour into our people and we invest in our people and we train our people and we believe in our people and we care about our people and we back up our people and we stand behind our people. What if we get people if we get enough people, those people are going to drive customers. Customers are going to want to do business with them. They're going to tell their friends to do business with them. They're going to tell their family members to do business with them. They're going to want that the, they'll literally attract more customers because they're such good people. And when we have great people that are attracting amazing customers, what does it generate? Dollars. Dollars. So we just literally flipped it upside down, man. All of our decisions that we made, of course, you track your money, you track your dollars, you have to be financially smart. But all of our decisions were not made based on profit. They were made based on people. And when you start making decisions based on people, that's how you create a culture that generates profits. Does that make sense? That makes total sense to me. Like I, when I ran restaurants, it was the exact same. Because you train the people well, you make them feel precious, make them feel important, make them feel like they're a champion. And they come to work. They're glowing when they get to work. They're excited to be there. They do a good job. They stop doing all the bad stuff that normally you'd have to discipline them to stop doing because right. they, 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 they want to be there. They want to do a good job. So I want to talk about like what, so you started moving this in the dealership. Like what are some of the like down and dirty, like nitty gritty things that you did to start pouring into people? And was it awkward at first? Cause I, I know when I've talked to people, they're like, I'm not going to have a, a pe like a pep talk. I'm not going to give them a rally, but I know in car dealerships, you do sales meetings every day. So like, what did you start doing to like pour into people and to really give people this, like the, um, to get it moving? 
Yeah. So I, I, I followed something that I call lead. So I have an acronym for the word lead and I spell lead with two D's L E A D D. Right. And so great leaders, if you want to be a great leader, I suggest you follow this process. So the L in lead stands for listen. Your mama told you this a long time ago. You have two ears and one mouth, right? You should listen twice as much as you talk. And that is wonderful words of wisdom. Leaders that take the time to listen to their people before they speak in immediately gain a level of respect and enthusiasm because the person feels heard, right? And in most cases, managers don't ever do that. Managers don't want to listen to their people, but great leaders do. So we start with listening. The E in lead stands for encourage. When you're listening to someone, I want you to listen to them with the intention of encouraging their behavior. Don't listen to disagree. Don't listen to argue against. Don't listen to tell why they're wrong. Why they're wrong. Listen with the intent to find something good and encouraging about that person. All people have value. All words matter. So if Steve and I are having a conversation, I need to have a really... I need to have a very important direct conversation with Steve. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get Steve in a room and I'm going to go, Steve, how are you? What's going on? Talk to me. Tell me about your wife. How's your kids? Right. I'm, and I'm going to listen to you at first. And then I'm going to say, wow, man, that's awesome, Steve. I don't know how it is that you balance your, 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 uh, your, your wife, your kids, and all that you do around here. You're such a valuable asset to the company. It's really incredible. I've been watching you the last couple of years, Steve, and I'm just, I'm so impressed at the different things that you've done. So now that I listen to Steve and then I encourage Steve, guess what I've earned the right to do? The A in lead is advise. Now I've earned the right to advise. So after I've listened to Steve, I've encouraged Steve. Now I can say, on another note, Steve, last night I walked around over on the lot and like half the cars were unlocked. You and I have talked about this. It is your responsibility to make sure every single door gets locked on every single car before we leave. And we got to treat this place like it's our house, man. Like this is how we're going to build, right? This is what we're trying to do. So I need you to do that. And Steve, you also told me that you were going to take care of this and you were going to take care of that. And you, you haven't done that. And we had an agreement that you were going to take care of it, but you haven't done that. So here's what I'm suggesting. We're going to go into the D in lead, which is develop. So I've listened to you, I've encouraged you, I've advised you on the areas that you can grow and get better. And now I'm going to develop you. I'm going to actually spend time. I'm not going to say what most managers, here's what most managers do. Hey, Steve, you left all the freaking doors unlocked last night, buddy. You know, you're supposed to lock them and you left them unlocked. You didn't do the thing and you didn't do the thing. Now get out there and freaking take care of it. That's a standard manager. Leader, listen, encourage, advise take the time to actually develop, right? If I'm going to tell you that there's something you need to do better, you better believe I'm going to take the time to walk you out there and show you how it gets done. Listen, encourage, advise, develop. The last D is daily. You can't do it once a week. You can't do it once a month. You can't just have a Saturday morning sales meeting. It doesn't work like that. It's every single day you have to lead with your wife, with your kids, with your prospects, with your customers, with your employees. If you follow that process, listen, encourage, advise, develop, and do it daily. If you follow that, I promise you, you will develop a culture in your home, a culture in your business. You'll develop a culture, a winning culture all the way around. That is, I, I really like that a lot. That takes like some of the tenants from thinking or thinking from uh, how to win friends and influence people, but puts them into a modern day framework. I love it. Thank so you. are you looking to scale your business, but trying to figure out how to get your message across? Well, go to storyselling.how to grab my free course that will show you how to discover everything that you need to build your business through stories. These stories work, whether it's in social media, email, or public speaking, there are five core stories that you'll learn. You'll be able to use all of them by the time you're done with this course. Again, that is storyselling.how. If you enjoyed today's episode, make sure to tune in next time.